Welcome to the first UK Space News update of 2025, which is kicking off with a bang with news from Ambasat, Alba Orbital and our British ESA astronauts. But first, big news from Rocket Factory Augsburg. So let's dive in. Hey everyone, it's Tom June, and we start with big news from RFA, who have just announced that they have received their launch operator's license from the UK Civil Aviation Authority, which will allow them to carry out their maiden launch of the RFA-1 from Saxavord Spaceport. Now, I know what you're thinking, wasn't that in place for their launch attempt in 2024? Well, as it turns out, not quite. What we are led to believe is that the license was imminent, but after the spectacular rapid unscheduled disassembly of the first stage at Saxevoord in August, that was put on hold until RFA could demonstrate to the CAA that they were capable of returning to flight and that all safety systems were satisfied. This last one is important as it showed that despite the dramatic looking fireball, RFA as well as Saxevoord themselves had acted within operating procedures and, in effect, had learned lessons from it. The CAA also wanted to ensure that RFA had suitable insurance in place just in case there are any further mishaps. Of course, we know that to be the case and now that the CAA are happy for them to continue, RFA can move ahead towards another launch attempt this year. So when is that likely to happen? Well, they were already working on a second first stage, which was originally planned to carry payloads on launch attempt number two, but that has been shifted up and will instead become the first stage of flight one. The loss of the Helix engines will have been the biggest setback as they need to be fully replaced, as well as producing more engines for further flights. But they at least don't need to worry about the second stage fairing or the Redshift OTV, which are safely tucked away at Saxevoord, awaiting final integration. I would anticipate that RFA will be back on the launch pad at Saxevoord within the first half of this year to carry out hot fire tests, and then the next launch attempt. But this news marks not just the UK, but Europe's very first licensed orbital class rocket to fly outside of Kourou at the European spaceport. Exciting times indeed, and you can bet the RFA hype train is now fully underway as we count down to that historic first flight. If you want to learn more about the RFA-1, then please check out this video when you're done. Before we go on, if you want to stay up to date with the latest UK space news from the only channel on YouTube exclusively dedicated to UK spaceflight coverage, then hit that subscribe button and consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter for access to content not shared anywhere else. Now, just a day prior to that big news, we had another successful flight from one of my favourite companies in the UK, Alba Orbital. Yes, they're Scottish and I'm biased, but let's move on. Hitching a ride on SpaceX's Transporter 12 rideshare mission, on board were 131 satellites, of which seven were part of Alba Orbital's eighth flight. Two from Turkey for Internet of Things applications, one from AGH University in Poland, tech demonstrators from Luxembourg, Spain, and Prometheus One, an educational platform and the very first pocket cube from Portugal. The Falcon 9 lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base in America at 1909 UTC on Tuesday the 14th of January, with larger payloads being deployed first. All of the smaller pocket cubes will be deployed over the course of the next week in order to minimise collisions and intrusions into the various flight paths. Another great turn by Alba, and we can look forward to more launches later this year. Now, speaking of my favourite UK spaceflight companies, another one is Ambasat, who provide micro-satellite kits, enabling what is perhaps the easiest access to space ever. In their latest newsletter, they announced that following approval of pre-application plans, they are now ready to submit their orbital license application to the Civil Aviation Authority 
to enable them to launch their first batch of tiny satellites into orbit, aiming for a first flight in Q1 of 2026. That first flight is likely to be an in-orbit demonstrator, showcasing their flagship 3U CubeSat carrying up to 180 Ambisat chipsats. These chipsats are absolutely fantastic bits of kit, allowing everyone from budding amateurs to school kids the chance to build a working satellite, fly it to space, and receive actual data back via Ambisat's very own unique browser interface. I'll have much more on this later in the year, but for now, if you fancy getting your very own satellite into orbit, then why not check them out? Speaking of checking things out, if you're a YouTuber looking for an easy solution to build your very own YouTube-focused website, then why not check out TubeSpace? In as little as two minutes, you can get a great-looking website to promote your channel to the world. Driven by AI, it pulls in data from your channel and organizes it in a fantastically laid out way, which is easy on the eye and without the usual website clutter. Everything in TubeSpace is built for YouTubers, including featured video sections, articles, blog posts, support links, and perhaps, thanks to yours truly, a way to even share your podcasts. My own website is hosted on TubeSpace and it's absolutely fantastic. This is not a paid endorsement, this is just a recommendation. So check out the link on screen to get started and use my referral code below. Now, last, but by no means least, on the 13th of January, our very own Megan Christian and John McFall touched down in Cologne, Germany to begin their astronaut reserve training. Now, of course, we've been following their respective journeys since they were announced as members of ESA's Astronaut Corps way back in 2022, with Megan's work as a spaceflight ambassador and the exploration commercialization lead at the UK Space Agency, and with John's disability feasibility study that he has partaken in over the past few years for the European Space Agency. But now, the real work begins. Both Megan and John are part of the Astronaut Reserve Group, which means that they will be fully trained astronauts who, whilst not being full-time ESA staff members, are held in reserve until the right opportunity or project presents itself. They'll now undertake ESA's bespoke astronaut reserve training, which will see them gain knowledge of spacecraft systems, flight engineering, robotics, life support, and spacewalk familiarization all designed to equip them with the skills and knowledge to step into a spacesuit if, or hopefully when, required. We really do look forward to seeing how they progress over the next 12 months and wish them the very best of luck. In a last bit of late minute news, Orbex have announced the appointment of a new Chief Technical Officer, Andy Bradford, former Director of Engineering at Surrey Satellite Technology Limited. SSTL. He has worked in conjunction with Orbex over the years during his time as CEO of UK Launch Services Limited and will provide valuable insight and knowledge as they finalise the Orbex Prime ahead of a planned launch at some point in the next year or two. So there we have it. Welcome to 2025 for the UK space industry. I really look forward to bringing you more coverage throughout the year. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I would ask that you consider subscribing to the channel to help us grow here. I really appreciate all the support and I want to give a big shout out to my incredible Patreon supporters who literally make these videos happen. Thanks so much for watching. I've been Tom June and I'll catch you next time.